Welcome, everybody. This is your Catholic Faith Reloaded. I'm your host, Father Nelson Medina from Colombia. In our last two episodes, we have been talking about truth. And probably you wonder why. Well, the reason is that unless religion gets a solid foundation in truth, religion will never be anything else but a bunch of fables and um, some fantasy, fruit of your imagination, with no possible impact in your real life and in the life of society. Truth is necessary for the human mind. You don't want to uh, lean your life on anything else but solid foundation. And to be, to, to gain, to have solid foundation, you need truth. That's why. So let's continue our journey. Uh, we have here very important texts to share. Okay. First off, our culture tends to be anti-truth in the following ways. Many believe that truth is relative. That is, whatever works for me. And this is very curious because when we speak, for example, of physics, we do not accept anything simply for because someone says, oh, that's what works for me. If you say, for example, Einstein was wrong because um, Einstein, I don't like him, or uh, Einstein does not work for me, not, not a chance that that kind of argument will be uh, accepted in any serious place. But when it comes to ethics, to morals, to human behavior, to taking decisions, well, that's a different story for many people. So that for many, truth is relative. You have your truth, that's truth for you because that works for you. Probably it works for you to believe in God. Well, that's okay for you. I don't believe in him, so it's not important for me. And it doesn't exist, or he doesn't exist. That is called relativism. Secondly, many believe that belief in absolute truth takes away the freedom of the individual. This is a deep issue in our society, especially in the Western world. There is a tacit opposition between truth and freedom. And this is because we tended to think that freedom is all about doing whatever pleases everyone. I, I mean, each one. I mean, you or me. <clears throat> what pleases me and the capacity and the right to do whatever pleases me, that's the way most people nowadays understand freedom. And that understanding of freedom is clearly not compatible with truth. Again, if you think of truth in behavior, truth in morals, truth in ethics. Think, for example, of a surgeon. This is a guy that is about to make a very risky operation on a human body, a human living body. Would you accept that this person says, um, I, I feel I would prefer to cut this vein. <laughs> I prefer, that's not an argument in medicine. 
it doesn't work in a surgery. You have to, you have to have, you need to have a better argument to do whatever you are about to do on a human living body. You need a different argument, a different reason. And if you go deep into that, you realize that what is important is what is true. So truth is actually limiting the freedom of the surgeon. He's not free to do whatever he fancy to do. He fancies to do. There is a limit. And which is true. We, we, we said in our last chapter, our last episode, we said truth is binding. And, the, and I think the example of the surgeon is very illustrative of this point. It is binding. You cannot do whatever pleases you. So if we keep the idea of freedom according to the meaning of doing whatever pleases me or pleases you or pleases her, that's not compatible with truth. Number three, many want to create their own reality and obey their own set of rules. This is particularly true, and I use the, the word very consciously. This is particularly true when we speak of gender theory. This is the idea that you are all the time creating yourself. But please do note that that is just a fine line between the idea of creating yourself and the idea of creating your world. And most probably in your world, you are the emperor and you set the rules and you say what is right and what is wrong. And most probably, you are not to accept anybody telling you what you should do or shouldn't do. In those senses, our culture has become anti-truth in the realm of morals and ethics. When we speak of mobile phones, when we speak of spaceships going to the moon, most people wouldn't have a discussion with that, with the technical details, I mean. Most people would not have a discussion on that. Okay. Let's allow technicians and scientists to do what they know very well how to do. And the rest of us just take a step back and allow them to do their work. There's no discussion. There's no argument about that. But truth, when it comes, to human life and taking human decisions and impacting, impacting other people, which is the realm of religion, wow. I think that we will find stern opposition on that. The fact is we are not free to believe anything less than the truth, for ignorance is binding not liberating. What can we say then about the truth? Truth is what is most singular, pure, and whole. Truth is what unites all things as when in an order system of harmony. I very much like this part. Truth is connected with harmony. The first impression when we define freedom in terms of doing whatever pleases you or pleases me, the first impression probably is, well, that's liberating. In real terms, in the reality of human life, if you keep your world closed 
and shut to me. And if I keep my world closed and independent from you, the world becomes a terrible place to be in. Truth is a relationship. It can be explored by ultimately, truth is revealed by its source. The philosophers called this source the first cause or the unmoved mover, but we know him as God. So the truth in its deepest sense is not the what, but the who, God, the source and cause of all that is, was and ever shall be. My friends, thank you for being here. And please join me as we give glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. See you next time.